if you're a struggling real estate agent and you're looking for some inspiration of somebody who started literally at the bottom and worked their way up, today I'm interviewing Rachel Rorwell. She's out of Panama City, Florida. She's a longtime subscriber of Zero to Diamond, my free real estate coaching program, and she followed it to a T. She went from $25,000 to $500,000 in gross commissions. Um, and she's doing quite well, and she's really too busy to even continue to make the calls. And that's the whole point of this. Yes, she wants to continue making calls to continue to grow her business, but you get to a point when you follow the simple systems, the simple program where you can't make calls anymore because you're so busy closing deals. Um, I can't get this through to you enough that my program is not a cold call for the rest of your life program. My program is a cold call for a good three to five years until you're so busy that closing deals that your prospects are cold calling you, not the other way around. And Rachel is a, a clear example of what can be accomplished if you visualize what could happen over the course of your career, build it up, and then I'm trying to help her understand how to get to the next level taking it from 500 to a million uh, automated residual business she's already she's already investing in rental properties she has several rental properties she's adding to her portfolio she's setting herself up to where guess what at some point she's not going to have to sell real estate cuz she has to she's going to do it because she wants to and eventually not do it at all which is where I am in the business and I hope that for every single one of you I started from the bottom Rachel started at the bottom. Uh, there's no reason why anybody watching this cannot accomplish anything they want to accomplish in this business. We're here to help you. Follow Rachel on Instagram, Rachel Royal Realtor. Go there, DM her, connect with her, make friends with her, ask her for advice, all that good stuff. She's happy to help and answer questions. And let's dive right into this one. If you enjoyed today's episode, hit subscribe click the bell and let's get into it. What's up everybody? How are we doing? I got Rachel Worrell with us here from Panama City. She's talking about she got a a whole ton, old boatload of closings happening this week. Rachel's one of my favorite success stories of Zero to Diamond. Um one of the biggest success stories really um came in um when I first, you know, realized she was in the group. She was doing like 25K a year. She did 500,000 last year in GCI, just over the course of like three years, went from 25 to 500. Quite remarkable. You guys have seen her on social media doing her thing, creating consistent content. She's a very uh, huge advocate of making calls and uh, you know building those relationships, doing the weekly email, all things zero to diamond. And I, that's what I find very interesting. Um, so Rachel, how are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for having me on here because like what you were saying before, I'm kind of the poster child for all of your coaching and I've implemented mm -hmm. it and the success I've had has been insane. And I've, I've literally, I have followed your coaching to a T yeah. and I'm, I'm excited to be on here today because I get questions on Instagram all the time from other agents and they're like, is, does this really work? Do the calls really work? Does the email really work? And mm. I'm like, yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I so think I, too, put that out there. I think too, when, when you, when you think about that question though, right? Mm -hmm. Like, does the calls work? Does the email work? I think the, the first thing I think about when I hear that is, is, well, it works for me. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I said this in Vegas. I, I might have said this in Vegas. No, I, I did say this in Vegas. I'm pretty sure. And I was there, Miami, so I'll let you know. <laughs> and, and, and in Miami last week was I basically did the same talk in Miami Friday um, that I haven't really heard of a lead gen or some kind of strategy that doesn't work. I've heard of it not working for some people, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like calls work great for me. Social media works for this person, you know, direct mail works for that person. Networking, it, you know, works for this person. The work becomes finding out what works really well for you. The thing for me, though, with all this was that I knew that I had to talk to people and I knew mm -hmm. that agents have to talk to people and all those things come right back to talking to people. So if you can get around mentally, the mental block behind, um, you know, having it 
come through a, a channel rather than just going directly to the person and having the confidence to talk to them, which you obviously have. Um, well, and, I did, and I wasn't, that did, that's not easy for anyone, right? It's always hard to start something like that. And it is really scary. And when you're you talking about cold calls, calls, right? Correct. Or yeah. even social media. Like, I am terrified even to this day of going live. I mean, and I always say this, there's no filter for my face. There's no filter for my mouth. So I always struggle with that. But I think with any- You struggle case, with going live? Oh, I hate it. Uh -huh. I hate it. But I do it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I just, I always have anxiety. So even if someone's having anxiety about calls or going live, those things that make you feel uncomfortable, um, they make you feel uncomfortable for a reason because it's an area you need to grow in, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I just, okay. So just a little bit about me. Whenever I started off in real estate, I started off on a team and they did a personality test on me. And I was high D and almost dead even with I. So a high D, high I. That me too. Really? I was a DI, uh-huh. Like just dead even. There was kind of like almost, yeah. you know. It was like a high D, high I, yeah. Yes, like off mm -hmm. the charts with that. So then yeah. with my personality, they were like, oh, you're not going to be a buyer's agent. So mm. um, there was no there was no plan B for me. Um, I knew if I wanted to send my little girl to school the next year, um, I had to do it. So I was already mentally prepared for the cold mm -hmm. calls. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, that's what I was going to do. That was the only source I had. So I made cold calls on the team as their listing agent. See, I, I was just talking to a brokerage about this. Mm -hmm. um, and they were talking to me about call reluctance, right? Mm -hmm. And even on the interview with Grant, we were talking about um, creating content, you know, and how people don't really create content because they're scared of the the haters, the negative comments, right? Mm -hmm. And then for calls, they're scared of people getting mad on the, you know, getting mm -hmm. mad at them for calling, which is really the same thing. When I, I started to think about it, I was like, okay, negative comment from somebody you don't know, okay? And that doesn't and know you. About, and you're worried about how they're going to judge you. So it's stopping you from even making the content. And with cold calls, somebody that might cuss you out for calling them that you don't know, that doesn't know you. Mm -hmm. And you're worried about what they think or how they're judging you. When in social media, you've got the haters and then you have all the people that love you. And then with cold calls, you've got the haters and you got all the people that love you. Oh, yeah. And Last week I made cold calls. Somebody told me to F off. <laughs> I mean, right. Same thing happens to me. Same thing <laughs> happens to me. Like uh, the last time I made calls, it was a really weird call. It was a for sale by owner. I was calling for sale by owners live. And, um, they, uh, you know, he was just kind of like, treat me like I'm just some slimy agent or whatever. I could feel the, the vibe. And I was like, man, this dude just don't even know. Yeah. But, but my point is, is that what you're talking about with your daughter I think really kind of amplifies what, what I was saying with Grant and what I said to these, this brokers today, like that negativity scares people from taking the action. And if they don't have a big enough why to do it, then they're not going to even like, if you have a spouse that is makes a ton of money, or if you have an inheritance coming, you know, in the next five or 10 years, that's worth 20 million bucks. Or if, you know, everything's paid for, or if you're satisfied with, you know, just enough bills to pay three, like whatever it is, if you don't have something driving you, that was like, when I started, I was scared to make calls, you know, like yeah. everybody else. But my big why was, is I'm going to make real estate work and I'm going to be number one, period. Yep. Like nothing. So I told these agents, I was like, I empathize with being scared to make the calls, but mm -hmm. I don't, I can't resonate with allowing that to stop prevent you. you from being a millionaire. I just, I can't resonate with that part of it, you know? So it comes back to bad. the big why. And that, that's interesting that it was your, it was your daughter that kind of gave you that. I find that like anybody that does make the calls and like really grinds it out and gets to where we are, mm -hmm. there, there's always something, you know, that's that's driving them and pushing them 
Yeah. And then there were some other things that definitely fueled me whenever I did decide to go into real estate. I had people like, oh, you're going to get into real estate, really? Mm -hmm. Like you and every other, because the failure rate's so high, nobody took me seriously. Um, and I then used that to fuel yeah. my, well, I'm going to show you, I'm, yeah. I'm <laughs> watch me. And so that's, that's what I've done. But at the end of the day, you know, if someone was mean to me on the phone or if I didn't, you know, it's like they hung up on me. They're hanging up on my daughter. You're not mm. going to hang up. You know, that's just not an option. So you just move on to the next person. Um, you know, and as a matter of fact, I think it's it's really rare when you see women cold call. Um, mm. And I think that there's, you know, some unique struggles that we have um, that male callers don't. For instance, our voices are already naturally a higher pitch. Mm -hmm. And when we get nervous or if we're scared of getting screamed at, our voices go up and, and maybe we start talking like this. and like, please don't yell at me, Mr. Seller. And mm -hmm. then, you know, then I would get these, how old are you? Um, people would ask me how old I was or mm -hmm. I would get hit on. And I'm like, well, here's the deal. Nobody's taking me seriously. Um, mm -hmm. nobody's, nobody's going to trust me with the sale of one of their biggest assets. If they think I'm a baby or if they're not taking me seriously as a professional. So yeah. I had to learn how to change my voice, change the tone of my voice, try and lower the pitch, talk slower, maybe a little bit more quietly and purposeful. And, and that has really helped me with that. And, and I will say this, okay. I think every woman, regardless of whether or not she has a child or not, she has a mama bear inside of her. Mm. And you don't want to mess with mama bear. Mm. She's protective. She's aggressive, um, intuitive, you know, and even empathetic, right? She's she's taking care of, of something more. So I think that that all women, regardless of whether or not you have a child or not, you have a mama bear deep inside you and the power of that that you can bring to the table with being protective of of the people that you're responsible for um and being like i said just you know a force to be reckoned with uh, you, every one of us has that so if i can do it you can do it yeah what what was the difference in the tone and stuff well, you know, my, when, whenever you're scared of making calls, right? Mm -hmm. So then, you know, you get a little nervous and then you start talking like this, like, please don't yell at me. I'm, yeah. I'm just, you know, da, da, da. And, and nobody's going to take you seriously. You have mm -hmm. to, when I was watching your coaching, when I found you on YouTube, you know, you always said you have to have the best intentions like you need to know that inside of you so that when you're calling you're not coming across as you're not second guessing yourself in mm -hmm. in the purpose of your call um hey i'm rachel warrell i'm a local agent over here in Panama city beach 30a um i was looking for the owner of this property 123 main street is that you yes oh good this is what i was looking for happy monday by the way Mm -hmm. Well, listen, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just sold this house down here for this much, or I saw your house was on the market a while ago. What's going on with it? What's the story? Yeah. With it? Yeah. So then you're, you're coming not from a place of, you know, don't yell at me. It's yeah. a place of like, Hey, I'm just here doing my job, trying to see mm -hmm. if there's anything I can do to help you. If not, you know, no worries. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think guys go through the same thing. They have to, find that confidence so they don't sound like a scared little puppy when they call. Mm -hmm. But, um, but you're right there. I, I do believe that there are like some additional challenges with, you know, with women. I honestly yeah, do. With, with calling. Um, but at the same time, um, I think that it's, it's, it's different. But we all have like it's the same thing. Like even the guys, like if Rachel can do it, you can do it. If Ricky can yep. do it, you can do it. Like yep. you know. Um, but yeah, you're you're right because it amplifies those problems when you're in the um like 
you have a lack of confidence, right? Mm -hmm. And you walk in and you have a little bit high pitch. And so then you feel like, you know, it's really not working for you when it's not as easy to kind of turn that switch off, you know, as it might be for a guy. I don't know. I'm just well, throwing I mean, stuff cold out calls, there. I make cold calls in a Zoom room predominantly by younger, with younger guys, right? Because that's predominantly who's making cold calls, I, I find. And when they're nervous, maybe they'll talk a little bit faster, but it's not necessarily their voice goes up to a higher pitch or they sound like a baby. I've never heard <laughs> in, in all of my hours of making cold calls with other, with dudes, I've never heard someone say, how old are you? <laughs> right? So it's just something that, but it's, it's, it can be overcome. Obviously, if you can go from making 25,000 your first year, you know, mm -hmm. a half a million in GCI your fourth year by mm -hmm. literally just making as many connections, connections with property owners in your market. However, so walk us through that. that. Mm -hmm. So walk us through that. Like, how did that happen? How did you go from 25 to 50 to 500? Like, walk us through, you know, just the cliff notes process. Sure. I mean, real quick, I was on a team. Um, I learned so much from being on that team, right? Like the, it, it, you know, I, I used to be kind of bitter about the split, but then you told me, you know, Rachel, the tools and the knowledge that you learned and the skills you learned when you're on that team are going to make you millions of dollars over the course of your career. So mm -hmm. stop whining about that. But I yeah. did have to leave the team because I was paying them 70% on top of. I forgot that. My, yeah. On top of my brokerage split of 36%. So even though I had done like 13 deals. I'd only so you and, paid the brokers 36 off the top, and then out of what was left, you paid them 70. I gave 70 to the team and then 36 36 from the off remaining of the 30, 30 that was left. Yeah, right. so you were getting like you were getting like 20 percent total. Yeah, it was in, in insane, you know, working, working like when I tell you, like I was calling through my little girl's school, like I'm like, uh, you know. And, and we had just had a hurricane. I wasn't able to live in my house for 10 months. Like it was just, it was do or die for me. But mm. unfortunately, because the, the split didn't work out, I went solo. And that is when I found you on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I saw you and you were, you know. Were you looking for coaching or were yeah. you, how did you find me? You were like searching like real estate coaches or what? Like, what do I do? Like help me, uh -huh. right? And so there's a lot out there. But, you know, and I watch Tom Ferry, um, just a few others, just on cold calling scripts. And then that's how I found you. Mm. And there was something so familiar about you. And I will say familiar in the root word of family. And in that, mm. you know, I'm from Pensacola, Florida, which is 45 minutes away from Gold Shores. Uh -huh. You had worked on oil rigs. Like my dad has worked on oil rigs. Matter of fact, he works at an oil refinery in Mobile right now to this day. Um, so there was that sense of like, dang, like he came from humble beginnings, blue collar. It's not like he came from money. If he can make a million dollars a year as a solo agent, I can do this too. And you just mm. said, all you got to do is outwork everyone, have the best intentions on the phone. So yep. I as a solo agent, and then I implemented the weekly email, but I will tell you, I saw results immediately as soon as I started using your scripts. I mean, I was mm. picking up listings and making genuine connections with mm. people. And I'm like, damn, like th this works. I mean, this is. This so is were you, were you using the script word for word? Did you alter it a little bit for you? Um, did you start doing the weekly email immediately? Like, what, what, like, how did you make this start working for you so fast? Well, I, I, I believed in what you were doing instantly because mm -hmm. I just, I'm like, if, if he can do it with like this, then I can do it like this. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I would, I would delve into the conversation, know that I had the best intentions out there, that I would be an amazing agent for anyone who would give me the opportunity. And I knew that. And it, it just gave me that, I guess, the, the the mentality to approach phone calls like that because I knew it was true. Um, I just had never thought about it like that. 
Yeah. Um, you were kind of caught up in the mainstream. Yeah. Like set appointment. Go for the clues. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was from, and, and nobody else was saying what you were saying at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. you know, you got a couple people out there that are definitely have stolen a page from your book, but to be honest with you, I mean, it, it works. So mm -hmm. I, <laughs> I, I, but yeah. So fast forward, uh, you did the, you, the first time you came out with the 28 day challenge was October of 2019. Mm -hmm. Right. So then I followed that to a T like mm -hmm. I executed and implemented every time you say, okay, three hours, I want you to call Fizbo's. The next day I want you to call, you know, expired, whatever. I followed it to a T. That's the open pretty hardcore. Dude, I'm, if anyone for real does the 28 day challenge, like you need like two days to sleep. <laughs> like how yeah. do you get done with it? You are so tired. We yeah. I mean, four. the 28 day challenge is like <laughs> basically impossible to complete. Like it's, you well, know. I found when I was a new agent, it, it was completely doable. Now that my business is thriving mm -hmm. for me to in more establish for me to do the 28 day challenge is pretty much impossible for me at this point in my business. But when you're brand new, if you're struggling, you, you follow that 28 day challenge. When he says go live, go live. When he says do a social media post, do a social media post. But that's just the groundwork for what any agent should be doing every single day. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you have a big sphere of influence or right, or if, if you have a lot of friends that own the type of properties that you sell, then, you know, work your sphere. But I didn't have that. I didn't come from money. Okay. Nobody in my family owns multi-million dollar beach houses, right? <laughs> but that's the property I wanted to sell. So the only way that I knew how to reach those property owners with the properties that I really wanted to sell was to call and introduce myself. I, I mean, there's just no other. And, and I'll see, you know, even luxury agents will talk about, oh, join the tennis club, join this, join that. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that I am not, I, I don't come from that, but whenever yeah. I saw you do what you did and come from the background that you came from, I'm like, okay, so it's possible for me to do this. And I, I just, I was sold even though there, it was free, <laughs> but I was like, yeah. I, I'm doing this. Like there was, there yeah. was no stopping me. Yeah. That's like that. It brings up so many different things hearing you talk because like it's the free part where now you went from 25 to 500,000 and you didn't pay me a dime uh, for coaching or advice or the challenges or whatever. Anybody can go do this. It doesn't cost anything. You can just go do it. Um, but the next thing was very interesting how you're not like the, you know, at, you know, going to like play tennis and social and network and stuff like that. So I'm like a, I'm like a big introvert. Um, and that brings up a whole new, a whole like another dire direction that we could take the conversation, which is thank God for social media yeah. because it gave introverts like myself who isn't going to go to the after hours uh, community networking events and like talk to people at the basketball courts and in the gym and all that stuff, meet people out in public. Like that's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but with social media, like you can be an introvert, you can be in your room at the house, creating content in the car, in the field, at a listing, just doing your thing. And literally everyone knows who you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just yeah. like me in the coaching yeah. world now, like for you to find me, before social media wouldn't have happened. I know. You know what I mean? I it just it, wouldn't 100%. have happened. I mean, yeah. but, and that was, and this is another thing that I definitely have to address because when I said, whenever I saw you on social media and how you seemed familiar, I could co totally believe how somebody from my area would say, okay, well, here's what I did. Here's how you do it. I mean, the thing is, it's, it's like I knew you. It's like, it's just, it's just like if, if I were to have a flat tire on the side of the road, I guarantee mm. you, guarantee you, there'd be a good old boy that would stop, right? 
He'd either be wearing flip-flops or work boots. He'd make sure I was okay. And he'd put my spare tire on and send me on my way. Like, that's just mm-hmm. how the people are around here. And I'm just like, it, I totally believed that you knew what you were doing. And then also, it was believable to me that you would actually give your playbook out. Because it's just, I don't know. It's like, it's, You know what's so crazy is when I did that, I was charging for coaching first. You know, and I had like 200 people. I was making like 10K a month, automatic payments coming in. I shut it all off and I told those 200, I had a meeting with those 200 people and I was like, all the stuff you guys have been paying for, I'm about to just give it to the world for free and I'm going to make it better. And I was expecting them all to get pissed, but they were all like cheering me on and stuff like that because they knew how much value I brought them for literally pennies. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, where was I going with that? Well, like, I good just, old boy. But yeah, very salt of the earth. I don't know. It's just it was believable to me that that somebody from Gulf Shores, Alabama, would do that. Oh, right? oh I know Gold where I, was, I know where I was going with it. I know where we're going with it. When I when I changed to free, mm-hmm. speaking of like opening up your playbook and stuff, mm-hmm. I was the number one agent in my entire county out of all agents and teams and everything. Smoked them all, and I started coaching for free. And just giving out everything, making calls online, letting people hear me make calls. Like, here's the exact playbook. Dude, so many people got mad. Like, What, local agents? Yeah, friends and family. Well, they thought that I was my business. I was going to tell everybody my secrets and all my my business was going to tank, number one. So they were worried about me. They -hmm. thought that my business was going to tank and that everybody was going to steal all my business, number one. Well, obviously that didn't happen. No, I made more money and I had more, I had way more respect from everybody at the end of the day. Um, well, you want to know not why even, though? And not even, even more, not even more money on the coaching side. I'm saying I made more sales. Like I had more deals that I was doing, right? Commissions. I made more money and agents locally had this new respect for me after a couple of years of me doing it. They're like, man, this guy. And so, but when I did it, like it was crazy the people that were upset with me giving away secrets for free and i was like but listen you you don't understand when i say on a video business is unlimited and that competition doesn't exist and all that i i I was like i don't think you realize how much i believe that like i'm all in on that like i believe it to the core that it's unlimited and competition doesn't exist. This is how much I believe it. I'm willing to open up my entire playbook for the entire market that I'm in locally, not only the US, but that I'm in locally, my direct competition and say, here's what I do. Here's how I crush you every year. <laughs> you know, here's my exact playbook of how I crush you every year. And um, people didn't understand it. They were just, they thought it was just the dumbest, craziest thing in the world. And maybe it was to a certain extent. I don't even know anymore. Like if I should have built an audience around people who pay me for stuff, because now people are like, oh, well, now you just have a bunch of people that expect a bunch of free stuff from you. And I'm like, yeah, well, I'm going to build some billion dollar businesses on the back of those people. Right. That's my thing. And then you have people like me that you've totally changed my life and you've helped. You've helped me. You've helped my family. I mean, don't think like I got your back for life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And like, just- and, and the, the, the people like you, um, you know, that didn't pay me a dime that changed their entire life and everything. Um, I wouldn't have got to you guys Yeah. if it, if it wasn't for free, you know, if there was some paywall or some kind of weird thing, I say weird thing, but I mean, for me, it's kind of a weird thing, you know? Well, let me tell you, my first year when I had just scraped by with 25000 like I didn't have a, a dime to my name, right? I mean, I barely broke even after MLS dues and childcare and everything like that. But I, I think at the same time, why, you know, you didn't have your business just completely implode and, you know, by giving out your playbook is that is proof right there that so many people aren't willing to, to do the work because mm-hmm. it's, it, it, it's, it's 
it's hard. Okay. When mm -hmm. you wake up at 4 a.m., then you do your workout, then you do your social mm -hmm. media posts, then you, whether or not you get cussed out at or feel like it, you make your calls mm -hmm. and you send your weekly email. And, you know, but at the same time, there's, and it's sad to say, but I think that a lot of people aren't willing to put in that much work and consistency. But I wanted to just, I am living, breathing proof that what, if the, everything that you teach works and that anyone can do it yeah regardless like you, know you just gotta to, do it you know what i used to tell those people they're like well okay you got a point only one percent is going to do it and i would say but here's the thing because i had to run this scenario through my head you know they had me second guessing what was going on and i was like but wait a minute even if 100% of the people actually did everything I'm talking about, I still believe that it's unlimited and there's no competition. Right. Like every single agent could call every property owner. And I just believe wholeheartedly that they would have different results mm -hmm. because you, you can't call every property owner at the same exact time when they feel the exact same way. So if, even if you call them five minutes later, they may think something totally different and want to buy or sell now or not buy and sell that they change their mind every two seconds. Number one. Number two, different personalities will drive yes. with people differently, which you could call the same group. Different people are going to answer, you know, in the ones that you do talk to, that's, a, that's maybe the same as the, as the other agents talk to. It's like expires, you know, like 15 agents call the expire, but then one agent gets the deal. You know, well, who got the deal? Well, the deal, the, the, the one that the property owner liked the most, in my opinion. Okay. Right. They kind of had their right. stuff together and it was kind of the perfect package behind personality and professionalism. Mm -hmm. It's not just professionalism. It's not just sales. And it's just not personality. It's like the package. How mm -hmm. professional How can you be the the full package of professionalism and have this personality around having great intentions? Yeah. And the I just connection. think that everybody's different. Agreed. Agreed. And I, I think too, on the same line, and this is something that I've done in my business that you didn't do was the social media aspect of it. Yeah. So if someone, you know, Googles my name, you're going to see me everywhere, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, whatever. And they're going to know what I sound like, what I look like, what mm -hmm. I do every day. Yep. And they're going to be able to tell from my social media as to whether or not that they want to work with me. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not generic. It's want to work personal. with you or not want to work with you. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's like this is who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to work with me? Great. If not, as you can see, I'm busy doing stuff. Exactly. You know, I'm helping people. <laughs> I'm working out. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. So, what advice do you have for people on social media? How often should they post? What kind of content? I think that's what a lot of people get hung up on. Like. I don't know what to post. I don't know what platforms. I don't know what to do. Right. Well, I would just say just start doing it, first of all. Right. Because um, one of the things that I had to do with the 28 day challenge was you got to make a social media post every day. They can't they're not all going to be knocked out of the park. But at the same time, focusing on that personal brand and your personality. And really, there is only one Rachel Worrell. There is only one Ricky Carruth. Competition doesn't exist. Just make sure that you start to put your voice um, and your personality behind your content and hope and make it valuable, mm -hmm. um, which is something that I'm still working on. You know, I'm not. Yeah, I am one person. I am one woman <laughs> through running mm -hmm. this business, trying mm -hmm. to. I'm the head marketer. I'm the the legion business. I'm the the janitor, like I clean my office. Mm -hmm. I, I'm doing all of these things. And so I'm trying to get better and, and figure out a way to really figure out how to get people to start helping me. Cause there's only so long, I think that someone can keep up the pace of yeah. doing it all themselves. Well, unless you find a good pace, like, like you build it up to a certain point mm -hmm. and then at some point, minimal effort keeps the momentum going. It's yeah. like when you make all those calls in the beginning, build your business up to a million bucks a year. And then it's just like with just the weekly email, mm -hmm. I kept a million bucks a year going. So sometimes, you know, we get into this place where we build it up to a certain point and then it's not so hard anymore. We can mm -hmm. kind of, you know, handle it 
Um, I'm always trying to get better, right? Yeah. I want my social media to be better. I'm always trying to figure out how to make how to make more calls, how to how yeah. to you know, and yeah. keep all my deals together that I've got going on. And but honestly, that was another thing that it did attract me to the coaching was that it was so simple, right? It's calls, certain hour day, and a weekly email, and not having to remember everyone. There was no CRM. I still don't have a CRM to this day. Wow. Yeah. No, <laughs> I don't. Never explained myself. I don't know anyone's birthdays, but they still love yeah. me. They get the email and they're like, yeah. Hey, Rachel, it's Amy. We're ready to list. And I'm they like, like the authenticity, right? They like the originality. They like the, they like your two cents on stuff, you know, in the mm -hmm. email and on social media. Like that's where you bring the value. It's kind of like what I was saying in Vegas about you got to pick what lead gens you want and throw everything else away mm -hmm. so you can focus on what's really working. Mm -hmm. Remember people's birthdays to me was never re a real value. Or so that was, one thing, that was one thing I could like spend a lot of time putting people's birthdays in, and putting people's birthdays in. And I'm like, I could take all that time and do all these other things to multiply my business and still give them the warm and fuzzies because I took such good care of them on the deal. And, um, you know, called them back, you know, answered my phone, sent them yeah. the email when I was supposed to send it to them. No, nah, with social media, honestly, you know, I've been doing it for six years, literally, literally in the last 30 days after 1600 YouTube videos, literally, I feel like I finally understand YouTube just a little bit, mm. like just a little bit. Um, in the past 30 days, I've had videos hitting 20,000 views and stuff, and I've consistently had them hitting, you know, like five to 10,000 to 20,000, like every video. That's the first time since I started posting that I've had consistent, you know, well, views. Can I just say your, um, your coverage on the commission trial? Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. Like, I'm like getting the popcorn out. Like, I'm enjoying every single yeah. one. I think it's better yeah. than Real Housewives, which is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Just it's reading so the funny. That whole lawsuit thing is so hilarious. What all's happening? You know, it's so weird. The, the plaintiff's lawyer is really like painting a weird picture of the industry. Like, oh, yes. agents are such scams. Yes. It's, oh. it's horrible. He's a and good I don't attorney, even, though. I mean, he's doing his job, right? He's, he's, he's doing his job, but geez, oh man, brutal. like, oh. But what 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 frustrates me is I haven't got the feeling that the defendants' lawyers are doing a good job oh, no. of rebuttaling, and and like, like I'm only like seeing the same thing y'all are seeing. Um, I don't have transcripts of the, of, you know, inside the courtroom. I'm not there. So maybe I'm getting a misconception of what's happening. Maybe there's, maybe it, it, maybe they're doing a great job. I don't know. It just, I get the feeling that we're not being represented as real estate agents. No, we're getting hammered. Um, you know, it's just like <laughs> the general public is just eating it up. Like all oh, that 6% thing. They're just thinking bunch of money got to be a scam. Yep. Um, it's like, you don't have to use an agent, go do it yourself. Like this is an option to use this service, mm -hmm. you know, um, the whole thing's insane. I don't think anything's going to change, honestly. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, of course. I mean, but just listening to your take on, Hey, if something does change, then this just means that, you know, focus on your listings. Here's the game plan. Here's how to, it's just whenever the pandemic happened and the shutdown happened, yeah. I was two years in the business mm -hmm. and I just, you know, I remember being on these calls with you and you're like, stay off Netflix. Like I'm telling yeah. you, stay on the phone, stay on the phone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I Same did. thing you're telling people now. Yes. Right just, this second. Again. Yes. But if the law were to change and it made buyer agent commission more of a kickback, I think there would be this, surge of like, I think we'll lose a lot of agents, number one, but number two, I think that buyer agents that specially that specialize in only representing buyers, like they will not take sellers will emerge. Mm. And I think you'll have these agents who only on work, payroll. 
that only work buyers mm-hmm. and they get paid a retainer up front, like mm-hmm. a lawyer. And then they have some kind of compensation schedule, whether it's at closing for a certain percent or it's half now, half later, or billed by the hour, like a lawyer. I think you're going to have a surge of these buyer only. Yeah. Buyer only agents that pop up because there's going to be a need because if a buyer, buyers aren't going to be represented that well. So there's going to be this massive need for these buyer agents and like all the listing agents are like all the buyers are going to go to that person. So they're going to have all the buyers. Okay. And then then all the listing agents are going to be best friends with those buyer agents saying, I got this coming up. Like, I think it's going to be a massive opportunity, but I don't think this going to happen. I think what's going to happen is that it's going to be kind of like a settlement type thing where like Remax said, we'll continue to keep doing this. And, Mm -hmm. you know, anywhere said we'll continue to keep like disclosing and like, you know, you don't have to be part of NAR. So I think it's going to be more like that where everything's going to kind of stay status quo and the general yeah. public is going to hate it because now, but most of them don't even realize what's going on. But anyway, get into the weeds there, social media. So if you're brand new, right? Mm-hmm. Brand new, no sales, don't know anything about real estate. Like what, what should a brand new agent try to do on social media? Okay. There. Um, so, well, what I did was, and I took a, listen to Gary V. If you're brand new and you don't have experience, document your journey, right? Show what you're doing. Show. And that's what I've done. I mean, you can go look at my archives on my Instagram and you can see what I was doing three years ago today, which is making calls and posting to social media or moving furniture or whatever. You know, Mm -hmm. I like to share my story. And I think that that's a creating a connection with potential clients or people in your market or and other real estate agents. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that does pull a lot of weight and it's not something that can be quantifiable your ROI on social media, but it is something that little, little something extra that well, people just start to know you. Yeah. Like 100%. people, you'll be like places and people say, I've seen you on social. If you're posting consistently, people will know you mm-hmm. and agents who see you, they just will see you as a hustler, respect mm-hmm. you, want to do business with you, want to sell your listings, want to, yeah, you know, wanna wanna you know want to help your deal go through when you're representing the buyer on their listings, send you referrals. Yes, right. A hundred percent, the magic happens, and they feel inspired when they see you work, and just kind of like when I felt inspired whenever I saw you work. You know, you take us on listing appointments on Instagram and all yeah. that kind of stuff. I'm like, all right, so what is that million dollar real estate agent? Say to his clients and his email, I'd be reading that stuff and everything. And this on the commission thing, just kind of going back, yeah. there is no way as a listing agent, if, if an agent brings me a buyer and we get a deal done, there is no way I'm not paying them. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, until well, we- um, <laughs> I, I think though, I think the I think the thing there, though, is if they make it a law, whereas you can't or you could lose your license. If they make buyer agent commission um, and they turn it into where it's viewed as the same way that you, we view kickbacks. Yeah. Right. That, that, what if it's like a 1099 thing? Like what if you could what if you could like work it around where you could pay them like a 1099 or like yeah there may be some there may be some workarounds right but at the same time if that happens chances are you're getting three percent on the listing side Mm -hmm. okay so now what are you going to pay the buyer agent i i mean it's got to be something i just the value of a really good buyer and then in that scenario Mm -hmm. the buyer still represented by you you're paying that person a referral so you're still mm-hmm. handling both sides. They're walking out. They're just giving you a name and walking. They're not, it's not like the buyer agent in that scenario. Another mm-hmm. thing is you can pay a referral, right? Cause you can legally yes. pay a referral, yes. right? So you can get your broker, your brokerage to write their brokerage a check, right? Mm-hmm. For whatever you want. 
you write yeah. up a referral agreement, right? But at the same time, now it's a referral. You're representing the buyer. You're still doing the work for both sides. It's not like a buyer agent. You're the buyer agent. Like they're not representing them like the current scenario, right? So it's just a totally different dynamic, mm -hmm. right? Um, I just don't think anything's going to change because like they did a study. You probably saw this in the, um, in the video that I did the other day or whatever, like where buyer eight listings where buyer agents were offered less than 2%, 75% mm -hmm. of those listings never sold. They remained unsold and the lower the buyer agent commission went, the longer it stayed on the market or whatever. I don't know how much I play into that survey or that mm -hmm. study done by that university. But right. If, if it is in fact true to some extent, you're going to do away with buyer agent commissions, go from like, you know, two or three to nothing. And now nobody has incentive to sell that house. Um, a lot of people argue, well, buyers don't need agents to, you know, well, you don't know how much you need the agent, but it's one of those things. You don't know what you got until you don't have it anymore. As soon as they, yeah. if, if they were to pull the plug on buyer agents, they, they would, the sellers would be the one filling the pain because the buyer agents are the ones consulting the buyer through the offer. Here's all the houses, you know, a buyer unrepresented, just running around looking at listings. They don't know when they should make an offer. If they should make an offer, they don't understand that they talk to the seller and they're like, okay, we're going to kind of think about it for a day. We'll get back to you tomorrow. And then they get the seller gets an offer from another, from somebody else accepts the offer that night. And now that buyer that looked at it missed out on it. The buyer, the buyer's like, dang, right. They yeah. don't understand that when you see something you like, you got to make an offer now mm -hmm. and you, you need to be consulted on what price to come in at to, to have to be the be in the best position um, negotiation wise, what all the terms should look like to best protect you with inspections and exactly. financing and this and that and the other. And you, don't know about, you don't know about uh, uh, like uh, insurance and how like you could be protected there. You don't understand how, uh, you know, HOA assessments, if it's a condo, I mean, oh my God, you want to open up Pandora's box to lawsuits happening? Yeah. You know how many lawsuits if, if buyers go unrepresented and have to pay their own buyer agent that people will elect not to that end up in bad situations where lawsuits pop up? Lawsuits would skyrocket if this were to happen, you know? That's why I just don't see it happening. I think what they'll do is say it's everybody's choice. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can still pay the buyer agent on the HUD if the seller agrees to it, which they're already agreeing to it in the listing agreement. Exactly. Right. If you know, if he agrees to it, then you can do it if that's what he wants to do, you know, and uh, I think it'll be status quo, honestly. Yep. I'm so, definitely, uh, like I said, I'm just speaking of your YouTube channel and the content you're putting out right there. Like I'm, I've got my popcorn with that truck. I know I've covered all last week. Today's happening. So I'm going to cover it tomorrow. Okay. So I'm just going to cover it all the way till we get a verdict. And I'm like, let's it's, go. It's pretty fun. <laughs> cool. 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 Anything else you want to share today? No, I think it that about covered it. I just, I'm definitely thank you so much for, everything you've done for me personally, you know, like on with all of your coaching and uh, like I said, it's, it's totally changed my life. And I just wanted to put it on the record that this will change your life. If you actually put in the work and actually follow it to a T it, it works. I'm living proof of it. And if I can do it, anyone can do it. So mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of my line, right? Because like people look at me like the Alabama guy that lived in a trailer that grew up roofing houses and stuff. And I'm like, dude, listen, look at me. Okay. <laughs> like if I can do this, there ain't no doubt. It's just like what I said on Instagram the other day. It, making a million bucks a year is not that hard. It's just that it doesn't happen year one. Mm -hmm. It's got to be looked yeah. at as like a career goal. Yes. You know, like you can do it in five, seven, eight years. You can get there. If you really grind it out, cool, man. It was good jamming with you. Everybody can hit you up on Instagram or where do you want everybody to hit you up at? Instagram's the best way. 
Rachel Worrell, realtor. I'm yeah. pretty active on there. So, you Follow know. Follow Rachel and check out what she's posting on social. Shoot her a DM. Tell her you enjoy the interview if you got anything out of it. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. I-35 with the top down. Quit to tell a hater they should